Hello everybody and welcome to First Chapter Friday. Um, today we are reading a book by Eva Ibbotson, uh, The Beasts of Clawstone Castle. I decided to read this because we're getting a little bit spookier this year, um, or this time of year, and um, I'm going to read the first chapter for you. This has also been illustrated by Kevin Hawkes. Um, he's great and um, it'll be kind of fun to s oh and look, even cooler, he signed our book. He's actually from Maine. So let's see, chapter one. Make sure we can all see it. All right, here we go, chapter one. There are children whose best friend have two legs, and there are children whose best friend have four, or a thousand, or none at all. Madeline was very fond of people, ordinary two-legged people, she liked the girls at her school and in her dance class, and she liked the people she met at the swimming pool and in the supermarket and the library. When you like the people, they usually like you back, and Madeline had so many invitations to parties and sleepovers that if she had accepted them all, she would never have, have had a night at home. She was pretty, she was very pretty with silky fair hair and clear blue eyes and a deep laugh the kind that infects other people and makes them think that being alive is thoroughly a good idea. Rolo, her brother, who was two years younger, was quite different. He did not mind people, but his truest friends lived under some stones or in the rafters of the local church or in heaps of earth in the park. And if he were writing a birthday card, it was more likely to be addressed to his stump-tailed st skink than to a boy in his class. The skink didn't exactly belong to him. It lived in London Zoo, but he had adopted it. The zoo runs a very good scheme whereby children can choose an animal to adopt. And, that, and when Rollo was six years old, his parents had taken him to the zoo to choose something he liked. The cuddly animals like the wombats and bush babies and fluffy possums all had waiting lists of children wanting to adopt them. But Rollo had seen, had always liked the lizards. And as soon as he met Stumpy's eyes and saw his berry blue tongue flicker out, he knew the creature was for him. The children lived in a ground floor flat in a pleasant part of the South London. Their parents were funny and clever and nice, but they were apt to be a little frantic because of their jobs. Mrs. Hamilton ran an experimental theater that put on interesting plays, but kept running out of money. And Mr. Hamilton was a designer and had to have good ideas about what people should do with their houses. Both of them worked long hours and never knew when they were going to be home. And when Rolla was a baby and Madeline had just started school, life had been rather a muddle. But as Madeline grew older, everything became easier. Though she loved parties and clothes and going out with her friends, she was a sensible and practical girl. And soon she began to take a hand in the running of her home. She left notes for her mother, reminding her to pick up Rolo's coat from the cleaners and make appointment with the dentist. She, ran her father, she rang her father at the office and told his secretary that a man from Hong Kong had come to see him and was eating donuts in the kitchen. And almost every morning she found the car keys that her parents had lost. Most of all, when she saw to it that Rolo uh, had what he needed, which was not always the same as what other boys needed, she soothed him when stupid people asked after his skunk instead of his skink. She stopped the cleaning lady from throwing away the snails he kept in a jar under his bed, and when he had a nightmare, she was beside him almost as soon as he woke. It wasn't that she loved him. She did, of course, but it was more than that. It was as though she was able to get rid right inside of his skin. As for Rollo, when he came in through the front door, he looked first for Madeline, and if she was there, he gave a little sigh of content and went off to his room to get on with his life. When everything is going along normally, it is hard to imagine why there should be a change, but at the beginning of the summer term, when Madeline was 11, An offer came from an American college inviting Mr. Hamilton to spend two months in New York setting up a course for people who wanted to start their own design business. There was a room in the college for him and his wife, but nothing at all was said about the children. We can't possibly leave them, said Mr. Hamilton. We can't possibly take them along, said Mrs. Hamilton. So we'll have to refuse. Yes, 
But the Americans had offered a lot of money, and the car was making terrible noises, and bills were dropping into the letter boxes and droves. Unless we send them to the country, they ought to be in the country, said Mrs. Hamilton. That's where children ought to be. But where? asked the husband. Where in the country? Where would we send them for two whole months? Up to the Scottish border, to Clawstone, a great uncle the to great uncle George at Clawstone Castle. I always meant to take them there, but by but she mean meant that great uncle George lived in a bleakest and coldest part of England and was thoroughly was a thoroughly grumpy old man. We'll see what Madeline thinks, said her father. Madeline when they put put it to her, knew exactly what she thought. She thought, no. She had four parties to go to, the school was planning a visit to the ballet, and she had been chosen to play Alice in the long, end of term production of Alice in Wonderland. What's more, from what she had overheard, she was sure that Uncle Great Uncle George's castle was not the kind that appeared in film cartoons, with gleaming towers and princes, but the other kind, the kind one learned about in history lessons, with things like moats and baileys and probably rats. It would be, it would mean wearing Wellington boots all day, she said, and I haven't got any. Rollo was lying on the floor, drawing a picture of the uh, Malayan tapir that lived near his skink in the zoo. Now he looked up and said, I have, I've got Wellington boots. Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton said nothing. The Americans were offering them enough money to enable them to fix the car and pay every single bill in the house when they got back. All the same, they stayed silent. The silence was a long one. But Madeline was a good person and the kind who wanted other people to be happy. Being good like that is bad luck. But there is nothing to be done. Oh, all right, said Madeline at last. But I want a proper boots, green ones, and a real oilskin raincoat. And southwester hat and an Aaron can an Aaron knit sweater with and a flashlight with three different colors she was a person who could always be cheered up by serious bout of shopping and that is our first chapter so um come on over and come read the beasts of Clawstone castle i hope you enjoyed this uh, and i will see you next week bye